to part five, and yes, this is actually going to be the final segment of our paper mache pumpkin reaper tutorial. All we have to do to finish these up is paint and then seal them. So let's get going, let's get them done. Halloween is right around the corner. First thing that you should do before you paint is if you are going to spray paint the inside of your jack-o'-lantern, do that first. Take it outside in a well-ventilated area with your can of orange spray paint or yellow spray paint or whatever color you want and just spray paint the inside. Um, it is completely optional. I like to spray paint the inside of my jack-o'-lanterns. Uh, I just feel that when I insert lights in there, um, it really makes, the, makes it stand out a little bit more. Um, so. This one was already painted on the inside before I even attached it um, because again this is one of my paper mache jack-o'-lanterns that I made a couple of years ago and decided that I'm going to recycle it and repurpose it into this piece. So aside from that I'm going to base out this whole thing in black, all of it in black. That's the first step. So I'm using again my uh, black exterior paint and primer combination here. Um, if you're, if you have a gallon or a quart or whatever, uh, make sure that you stir it, that it's mixed before you start painting. I've got a few different sizes of brushes, but uh, I think I'm going to start. I'm going to start on the back. And as you can see, um, after the cloak dried, it's more of a dark gray. Um, and I, I, were, I really want it to be black. A couple of different ways that you could do this. You could certainly take this thing outside and spray paint it with a can of black spray paint. That would probably be the easiest way to do it. Um, but again, uh, there is a wildfire. Uh, where I live or outside where I live down in the valley below uh, Lake Tahoe and it's still very smoky today um, really unhealthy air quality so I'm going to be painting this inside my studio and that is the reason I have chose to use my uh, paintbrush and just paint on the paint so it's going to take me a little bit longer to do so but not a big deal um, but much quicker and easier if you just get a can of black spray paint. Don't get a gloss. Um, get like a satin or a flat black and uh, spray paint the whole thing. I'm I'm uh, also I'm gonna paint uh, the the base of this bust here. It's going to be solid black. So the whole thing, including the jack-o'-lantern, I'm basing it all out in black. It is a little tough to get into all these little creases um, with a paintbrush, but I think I'm doing a decent job of it. I'm trying not to slop black paint inside my jack-o'-lantern that's painted orange on the inside. If you have chosen not, uh, if you have chosen not to paint the inside of your jack-o'-lantern, then that's not going to matter. I have left is uh, the base here and I am going to paint also paint the bottom of the base after this sculpture dries because this will help protect it because I am intending on putting this outside so that's pretty much it for this step here. 
Um, base it all out in black. Let it dry completely. Flip it over and paint the bottom of your base black. And then we're going to come back and really start painting. We're going to do some dry brushing and bring this thing to life. All right, next step is we are going to start dry brushing. And what I'm using here is a, this is just a color sample. It's an interior or exterior sats or stain blocking paint and primer all in one. Uh, you can pick these up at your local uh, home improvement store or hardware store because uh, you won't need that much. And I also have a blue shop towel or you can use some newspaper. And I have my various sizes of paint brushes. Probably going to just use these two here. Uh, this is a one inch chip brush that I have cut down and just a regular bristled paint brush. So the key to dry brushing, if you're not familiar with this, is taking a little bit of paint and knocking off, knocking off most of it. So that there isn't much on there. I'm gonna start up at the top here. What this dry brushing with the white is going to accomplish is number one, it's gonna bring out all the texture. And as you can see, um, you can see that texture coming out now. The little lines, cranial markings that I put in with while I was sculpting. Um, I am not going to paint the insides or, or dry brush the insides of the eyes. Those are going to fall to black as well as the inside of the nose. I'm just going to turn this here. I'm pretty much just letting the brush do the do the job do the work it's going to pick up it's going to pick up the raised areas and allow the recessed areas to remain dark And as you can see, I am getting a little on my black cloak. Um, not a big deal. I'll just have to come in and uh, repaint those areas. Just lifting that up so you could see that a little, little bit better. get underneath just a little bit I'm gonna let the neck area just fall to black I'm not gonna dry brush the neck area and you can add as little or as much of this white dry brush effect to this as you want um, I am going to go in with a different color to make it look more like bone after this dries. So I'm going to leave that as it is and now I'm going to move on to dry brushing the hands. So dry brushing the hands same way as I did the skull um, and in fact I'm going to dry brush not only the hands, but I'm gonna dry, I'm gonna dry brush the entire pumpkin as well. Um, so I'm gonna start at the top here. This again is going to bring out texture. So 
So when I go to paint my pumpkin and apply the colors, different colors of orange, um, it will maintain or retain some of the black underneath. You can't see what I'm doing right now, but I'm just dry brushing the top of this pumpkin here that's showing uh, outside of the uh, cloak. I'm also going to dry brush. I'm also going to dry brush the stem. And I'm just going to carry on and continue the dry brushing over the hands, the rest of the pumpkin. I'm going to get underneath here, underneath this pumpkin. All right, so I've got this thing dry brushed. The skull is dry brushed with the white, the pumpkin, and the hands here um, on some of the raised areas uh, on the pumpkin and then of course and the skull um, and on the hands uh, I did hit it a little bit more with the white because um, that when I go to apply actual paint over this dry brush technique here um, those areas are gonna pop a little bit more so that's gonna be next I'm gonna let this sit and dry for a bit and come back and start the actual paint and that should go pretty quick. And then uh, after the actual paint is com completed, uh, I gotta touch up some of my black on the cloak um, and then we're ready to seal it and I'll show you what it looks like uh, with some lights inside the jack-o'-lantern. My white dry brush is completely dry. Um, I'm gonna go in now and I'm gonna start on my jack-o'-lantern. I have a few different colors here. I've got a nutmeg brown acrylic. I'm going to use a, this is a pumpkin orange acrylic. And this is an outrageous orange colored acrylic. Um, that's basically what I'm gonna use for my jack-o'-lantern. Um, I have my little paint palette here um, with my oranges. Those are wet. Ignore all the other stuff. All those other colors are dry. And I'm just going to put a little bit, a little bit of my brown paint in here. I don't need much. First thing I like to do is to kind of bring out um, these ridges here. Is in between. I'm going to take a little bit of my uh, nutmeg brown and I'm just gonna go in to those areas all like the basically these recessed areas and I'm just kinda hitting those areas with a little bit of the brown you gotta work quick if you're if you're doing this technique um, the reason for that is because this acrylic paint dries really quickly I'm getting the uh, the ridges over here on top. Not doing a whole lot of, of the brown, just a little bit. A little bit here and there. And then without even uh, washing off my brush, I'm gonna come in here with my uh, out or sorry, my pumpkin orange. And I'm just gonna start applying my paint and I'm gonna continue and film the whole uh, 
the whole painting process here, I add a little bit more of my brown in there. Um, but I'll probably end up fast forwarding, speeding it up. I'm trying, gonna try my best not to get so much of this orange paint on my hands or my fingers of the uh, the Reaper. I'm gonna come in with a new paintbrush without any paint on it, smaller one. And with my outrageous orange, I'm just gonna go in and just certain areas where um, the ridges are really pronounced. I'm just gonna hit those areas with my outrageous orange here. Not a whole lot. And yes, the pumpkin orange is still wet on here. So that's pretty much it. That's all the painting I'm going to do on my pumpkin. Really simple. Three colors. My nutmeg brown to darken up those recessed areas. Pumpkin orange pretty much over the whole thing. And then a little bit of the outrageous orange to hit the highlights. Um, those more prominent areas to bring those out more. I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to continue and paint this pumpkin stem. All right, pumpkin is dry, paint's completely dry on him. The color looks a little muted, but it won't look that way um, after the sculpture is sprayed with the polyurethane. That's one of the things that spraying it with a can of polyurethane does. Not only does it help to protect it from some weather and moisture. Um, it also makes the colors really come out. They, they just pop after it's dried with that polyurethane on there. So I'm gonna work on the stem. I'm just going in here with some nutmeg brown. And as you could see, um, some of that black is coming through, and that's what I want. All right, now I have a, uh, this is a Christmas green colored paint. I'm just gonna use a little bit of that 
Again, I'm still using my brush that has the nutmeg brown paint on it that's wet. And I'm going to go in and just put some of this Christmas green color on there over the brown. Uh, you could leave your stem brown or whatever color that you want to paint it. You can paint it solid green so it has a green, bright green stem. And if it gets too green, you just add a little bit more nutmeg brown to your to your stem. And there you have it. Really simple. I'm going to move along here and paint the skull and the hands here. Um, by all means, if you like the way that your sculpture looks with just the white dry brush over those areas, leave it like that. It's perfectly fine, not a big deal. But I'm going to add a little bit of color to it. Uh, I'm going to use a little of this Golden Sunset acrylic paint, and I'm going to mix that with a little bit of my white uh, paint and primer. This right here. So I just have, I have very little paint in there. Because I want to hit some of the areas and just bring out some of those highlights. So I want it to be pr pretty pale. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of my nutmeg brown to that. I might end up hating this. We'll see. Um, I have a shop towel here. And I'm just going to go in and then rub off. I kind of like the way that looks actually. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue on in the face here, um, in the skull, paint that, wipes, wipe it off so it's not so heavy. Um, and then I'm going to move on to the hands. So there you have it. I do have some touch up to do inside the eyes, um, going in with black and then up here on his hood, there's certain areas where, um, got a little white, speckled paint on his cloak that I'm gonna repaint after I'm done here and just clean up some of those areas but that's how that looks um, I like it and now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the hands all right the hands I'm gonna use a uh, smaller paintbrush <clears throat> same color same color same technique Some of the black is going to sh sh show through, um, and a little bit of the white is going to show through. I'm just going to carry on, paint up these hands and the fingers. All right, there you have it. He is done. Um, I went in and I touched up inside the eyes, the nasal cavity around where I got some white paint and some of this off-colored yellowish paint on the cloak and around the jack-o'-lantern um, and my little bits of splatter from the white paint. I cleaned all that up. Uh, he's good to go. The only thing left is to allow it to dry completely now and then I'm gonna take it outside and 
I'm going to spray it with a can of Minwax fast drying polyurethane. This is a clear satin. A couple of different reasons why I want to spray it, and I went through those a uh, couple of them. Uh, first and foremost, if you're going to put something outside and it's paper mache, you do want to protect it. Um, this will protect it from uh, moisture. Now, is this going to be completely waterproof? No, it, it won't be. Um, I babysit all my props that are paper mache that I put outside. If it starts raining, I'll either cover them with a tarp or I'll bring them inside. Um, I don't allow weather or rain or snow or sleet or whatever just to pour down on my paper mache. Um, if that does happen, and it has happened to me uh, on a couple occasions um, in areas where the sculpture got a little soggy in places, you just bring them inside and I, I don't mess with it. I just put it in front of a fan on high and I let it reharden in front of a fan um, for like 24 hours. 24 to 48 hours, it'll harden right back up and you're good to go. Um, but uh, if you're not planning on putting your prop outside, you should still seal it um, for a couple of different reasons. Uh, number one, and I talked about this already, but it's really going to bring out the color um, by sealing it with this, spraying it and sealing it with the polyurethane. Those colors are going to pop. And it'll also protect it from dust. Um, after time, dust settles on things. And especially something like this where it has all these creases in here. Um, if I did not seal this or spray it with the polyurethane, I wouldn't be able to get in there with a lightly damp rag and remove some of the dust because the paint, especially the, the acrylic paint, um, it would just wipe right off. So by spraying it with the polyurethane, you can take a lightly damp rag and remove the dust from it and it won't remove any of the, uh, won't remove any of the the paint. So that's where we're at right now. Um, one thing that I do want to mention is that on your platform, your very bottom platform there, I've left mine solid black. Um, if you wanted to dry brush some white or even some gray on that and it'll make it look like stone. So if you're going to display this as like a column topper or something like that, that might be the way to go. Uh, if you didn't want to leave it solid black. Um, I am going to spray the bottom of this as well with the polyurethane. The whole thing is going to get a nice coat of the polyurethane. Now, I'm not going to film that. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Spray the whole thing. Get a nice, even spray of the polyurethane on there. And if you really wanted to, wait for it to dry. Go back. Spray it again. Um, so... That pretty much wraps the tutorial. Um, the last thing that I'm going to do is uh, wait till it gets a little darker, and I'm going to show you what this thing's going to look like um, when it's lit up when I put the lights inside the jack o' lantern. So that's going to be the last thing. All right, while I'm waiting for that to dry so I could seal it, I want to talk about my next tutorial coming up. It's going to be pirate skulls. And here's a look at some of the pirate skulls that I've made throughout the years. inserted some LED lights in there, uh, different colors, right through that hole. It looks pretty cool. I'm really happy with this guy and how he turned out. Uh, I'm going to hit the lights, uh, dim the lights a little bit more. I didn't get to seal it like I wanted to today because it's starting to rain outside, so that'll have to wait. But let me hit the lights here so you could see uh, what it looks like when it's a little darker. And there you have it. 
And that is a wrap for our Pumpkin Reaper tutorial. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you make something cool. And catch you in the next one.